As noise vibrates them, they send electrical signals to the brain which we experience as sound. It's fascinating to watch, and we're about to see it happen. Take a closer look at these V-shapes. They are, in fact, clusters of three lines of hairs which are part of a built-in amplifying system. Now, if we take a look below, we should see the rest of the amplifier. There we are. The hairs are sticking out of the cell underneath, shaped like a sausage. It's actually been possible to isolate one of these So this is, a, this is the outer hair cell. This is increasing amplification. You might recognize the tube. The joints jumping, literally. The excited response of these hair cells amplify the faint vibrations that arrive here from the outside world. And they do it so well that we can actually hear the sound of a pin drop. Unfortunately, from the moment we are born, one by one, hair cells start to die. And those that register high frequencies die off first. The damage hair is where hair cells have failed. Because of the loss of these hair cells, by the age of 10, we've heard a greater range of sound than we'll ever hear in the rest of our lives. As we get older, some people continue to hear relatively well. But in others, so many of the amplifying hair cells have gone that they can only hear loud noises. Most cannot hear high frequencies. This would be sensory neural blocks. So the this cannot be helped by a hearing aid. Younger people might hear something like this. <laughs> would instead be heard like this.
how and what level and what type. So a middle C from a flute or an oboe or a person's voice all have different characteristics. And that has to do with where on these hair cells as well as where on the basilar membrane this information is activated. So these, side, these images in your lecture uh, PowerPoints are just referring back to that basilar membrane structure. Okay, now let's look at the vestibular apparatus, uh, which is the semicircular canals, the utricles, and the sacral. Okay, so let's look at the semicircular canals, and I'm going to turn off the light again, and we draw this area right here. Okay. Just yes, give you a pretty, a custom, custom border on your pages. That's what I did. Happy birthday, custom borders. Yeah. So may I erase this? Do you guys have this already? Uh, yes. We have pictures. Okay. Okay. Yeah, 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 and then the birthday is over. Because I could just go redraw that right now. I know everything. All up here. Hey, what are those blue things? Are those the glands? So this fluid can be continuous. The perilips can be continuous in the usual and the where are the glands? Not on there yet. So we have the saccule. The utricle. And then we have three semicircular canals. So do you see these semicircular canals on your, your models? Uh, there is one that the cochlea is facing this way. Let me get the... Anybody have a really big ear? I got one. We have a really big ear. So, the cochlea is medial. Only one of your things is broken out. The cochlea is medial, and so there is one that's kind of parallel with the ear. That's the superior. Okay, that would be like this wall right here. So, if I was on the other side of that wall. So, that would be the superior or anterior semicircular canal. The back wall would be the posterior, and the floor would be the orientation of the lateral. Okay? Nobody wants to catch this? So the cochlea is going to be over here. All right, and we would have the superior or anterior, whichever way you want to call it, semicircular canal. And then we would have the posterior, I'm sorry, the lateral. And then kind of forming the back wall here, we would have the posterior. Now each of these has a dilated region with that blue tube I talked about. So we're just going to assume that that's the blue tube. And Sitting in each of these dilated regions is a cluster of hair cells. The cl hair cells, however, are embedded in a mound of gelatinous material. And if I were to draw that again over here, it looks like this. The hair cells have also tall microvilli or stereocilia. And this has fluid in it, so there's endolymph traveling through these spaces. Yes, sir? Um, is this similar to the diagram on page 142? Um, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. It must not be if you can't tell, but it's supposed well, to be. Well, it is a little different. So what page? 146. Yeah, it's just kind of rotated slightly around. So um, I'm just having trouble with differentiating. So it's superior is my circular canal. It looks like on this. So on this diagram, they're not labeled, but the superior or anterior one would be this one here. Uh -huh. Okay. This one that's horizontal is the lateral, and the one in the back is posterior. Which one? Which one? Back? Posterior would be this one here. So this one would be anterior or superior. This one that looks narrow would be lateral, and the big, big one, the widest one, would be the posterior. Okay, so that is superior. 
This one is posterior, and this one is lateral. What this does is no matter what angle the head is bent, then it will pick up the spinning of the fluid. All right, so as I start to move like this, the endolymph and perilymph start to move through that space, and when I stop, my bone stops, but the fluid keeps moving. And so that discrepancy between the endolymph and this structure known as the crista ampullaris, the fluid, when you first start to move, um, and when you stop moving are the most important points, and that causes this to tilt one way or the other. And one direction is going to decrease the amount of depolarization. The other direction is going to increase the number of firings. And that's interpreted by our brain as the world moving or your body moving in a different rate or a different direction. So um, that can affect your feeling of dizziness, okay, or if you're going it's angular accelerations, so if you go around a corner in the car. My, I don't do it so much now, but when my kids were littler, uh, we had a couple of turns to get, we still do, to get to our house, and so I would just be driving along and act like I was going to miss it and then just yank the wheel really hard and throw them against the outer wall of the car. They loved it. Um, so they begged me to do it, and I wouldn't, of course, when they were expecting it. I'd do it at the next corner when they weren't expecting it. So that's what we find here. And so I want you to associate the semicircular canals with what is known as dynamic equilibrium. Both of the semicircular canals and the neutrical sac are going to be equilibrium or balanced, but dynamic means mobile, moving. So spinning, you know, your ice skating, your running, whatever, you're, you're, you're turning and moving. Um, is what the dynamic <coughs> equilibrium refers to. In the utricle and saccule, we have a similar type of structure, a little lower, that is known as a macula. And these also have hair cells in them. So I'll draw that over here. Embedded in this gelatinous material, however, are uh, mineral crystals, mostly calcium and carbonate, known as otoliths, which means ear stone. And it makes the macula top heavy. So what happens is not you're, you're not spinning, but your head tilts to one side or the other, either as your body tilts or just your head. And again, depending on the different positions, this will be picked up, especially because of the top heavy otoliths. So um, it's kind of like making jello. If anybody makes jello for Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. and you put all the fruit at the bottom of this tear shaped mold. And then when you unmold it, it's going to really jiggle at the top if all the fruit is at the top. That's going to magnify the pull of gravity on the top of that. So it starts to tilt. It's going to tilt even more because of the weight of the fruit or whatever you have. So these otoliths increase the movement, the slight movement of your head is increased by those components. What were the otoliths made of? With Calcium carbonate. Okay. Um, a student in the morning lab was at, I'd heard of the procedure, but I didn't didn't remember the name and I still don't remember what she called it. Uh, but some people get vertigo. They feel like, you know, they're lying in bed and they and it's not the falling off, but you just tilt the head a little bit and things start to spin. And so vertigo can be caused by a virus of the inner ear causing inflammation. It can also be caused by one or more of these otoliths getting knocked loose. And apparently the maneuver that she was telling me about a uh, therapist will tilt your head a certain way to get that otolith to settle back. And I don't know why it attaches again, but they tilt it to come back in and settle back on the macula. Seems to me it would just come loose again the next time you bang your head. But so like if I don't know, uh, growing up, I'd be on a, like on a boat all the time, uh -huh. and then I'd go 
like sleeping for like a week on a boat and then I'd go on my bed and then it'd be like, it'd be like maybe is that from them being like that's the transition the of your cerebellum. Oh, okay. So it's something different. Oh, it's both. Okay. But it's involving your cerebellum okay. too. Okay? So that's, that's the end of the lecture. I just want to show you a couple of pictures of these otoliths. Um, I won't erase this. I'll, that'll take a little while for the... Um, so what I want you to know is the dynamic equilibrium is for the semicircular canals. The utricle and saccule are involved in what we know as or use the term static. That means not moving. So spinning type of balance is going to be the semicircular canals. That's what I demonstrated for you earlier when we were talking about the cerebellum, a nice fun. Okay. The static. Static equilibrium. Is to do the superior. No. Dynamic equilibrium is all of the semicircular canals. Superior. And static equilibrium is utricle and sacral. Okay. okay. I'll put the board back up again. Just want to give you these images here. And I will put those videos on D2L as well. So this is showing the Krista angularis here. And as the fluid moves by, that causes that to uh, bend one way or the other. And with the different semicircular canals, we can get bending in different positions of the head as you move. So that's just showing an enlarged view of the semicircular canal and the crista angularis. And location is a scanning electron micrograph. Right. And here it's showing the tilting in the different positions that would activate each one. I'm not going to test you on that, obviously, it's a little more detail. And then here's the macula, and you can see the little otoliths to the crystals. So these are the little mineral crystals that are embedded in the top of the macula and make it top heavy. All right, we're done with this unit. So, uh, some of you may want to stay and work on the lab this afternoon or study for the lab exam. As I indicated, you'll have time on Tuesday as well to work on the eye here. You can do some of that at home. If you don't have a tuning fork and stuff, we've got that here in the lab. Yeah. Uh, Say that again. How much are you there? How 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 are you there? Uh, I'm about to drink like a six pack of red bull. Uh, I'd take a jump as well. No. I know. So we'll do the lab exam first thing. I can sleep in more. On Tuesday? Oh, Tuesday? I'm sorry. Oh, my goodness. What? what? We have a presentation I completely forgot about. Oh, sorry. Come up. Come That'll up. Come be up. Come uh, up. some other day. No, Extension. They want to get it over there. Right. Sorry about that. As long as you guys promise to be.